So what we saw with the lower and the higher dose in the trial was that there was not really a dose response, meaning the 50 mg per kg or the higher dose wasn't way more effective than the lower dose. And so I think that kind of suggests that for the majority of patients, the lower dose should be effective. Uh, and I think that's good because lower dose of medication usually means better tolerability. Of the, of the side effects of note uh, was um, diarrhea and then also elevation in liver function enzymes, which were also seen in the prior trials. Um, what I was happy to see or relieved to see was even though this trial involved much higher doses of CBD, there were more adverse events at the higher doses, but not significantly higher. Um, and so we feel like it gave us a safe passage, uh, knowing that even though for most patients the lower dose of CBD will be effective, um, we know that if patients do need a higher dose for optimal efficacy, uh, that it can be well tolerated tolerated for some individuals. Uh, the main drug-drug interactions I think of note with CBD are with clobazam, uh, since it increases the active metabolite of clobazam, desmethylclobazam, which can result in significant somnolence or lethargy or agitation. Uh, the other significant drug-drug interactions with valproate, and we don't completely understand that yet, but what happens with that combination is sometimes an elevation in liver function enzymes. Typically not really clinically significant, just picked up in laboratory evaluations. In this trial, the difference between the the TSC trial and the other trials were that many fewer patients were on concomitant therapy with clobazam. Um, so somnolence was not as big an issue in this trial as it was in the other trials. But the side effect profiles, again, across the different trials is very consistent, which again is very reassuring. So since uh, Epidiolex was FDA approved and available about a year ago, um, we have fortunately been able to get approval for many of our patients uh, with Dravet syndrome, with Lennox Gasto, um, and others. The expanded access program, we had 57 patients in that program on CBD at time of approval. The majority of those patients did not have Lennox Gasto or Dravet, uh, and we were very happy uh, that the, the payors, the insurance companies, were willing to cover it for those children those children had shown benefit. So what I think we've learned from the expanded access program and kind of real world experience since its approval, that CBD can be a potential, very effective therapy for many patients with refractory epilepsy, not just those with Linus Gesto or Dravet. I think the other important message that I keep relearning even after approval is that it's not a silver bullet. Um, so even though we do have it now on armamentarian and it is going to benefit many people, there will be patients who don't benefit from the medication.